Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're going to be installing FreeBSD. Now, a quick note before we get into it. I'm assuming that we've already went to FreeBSD.org and you've either downloaded the ISO file or the IMG file. You went and created your install media from it and we've booted up. So at this point though, this is our screen we're presented with. Anything in blue is what's highlighted and we just use the left and right arrow keys to select. So, we want to hit enter on install. That's the, the main thing. You highlight it, you hit enter, so I'm not going to say it a million times. Alright. <clears throat> now, our key map is how FreeBSD will detect our keyboard. And this does vary depending on what country you're in. But ours, right now, I'm going to stick with the standard of US, in my case. So, we're just going to continue with the default key map. The host name will identify OpenBSD on, on the network. So we'll say T-Tech in my case. But make sure though in the host name that there is no spaces like so. Hyphens or underscores or any special characters because that will be invalid. But that one's okay at the moment so we're going to go ahead and accept it. And we're going to, this is the, the sets of software. We're just going to accept all of the defaults, so we're going to go ahead. This is how FreeBSD will use our hard drive and partition it. We'll just accept the Auto UFS option. We'll use the entire disk. And the default partition table is fine. Now, the layout of how FreeBSD sees our system is, is ADA0 is our main hard drive itself okay and with this though freebsd makes the ada0 s1 that's the bsd slice so that's the actual partition on the hard drive <clears throat> and inside of this slice you have s1a and s1b s1a is our FreeBSD UFS file system, the Unix file system, and that's the mount point of slash. Essentially, this is where FreeBSD will live and all of our files will be. So this will be our slash home or our slash root. All, those are all the directories, some of the directories in Unix that FreeBSD will store here. So that's what that is for. And ADA0S1B is our swap space. This is just in case we run out of RAM. Um, essentially, FreeBSD can take anything in RAM that it doesn't need at the moment and put it on the swap space slice. So it will be able to work on something else, and then when it's done, swap it over and work on the other thing. But if you do run out of uh, swap space a lot, that is an indication your system might not have enough RAM for as many programs as you're trying to run. So in that case, you can just you know, buy more RAM. But anyway, that's how we have it partitioned and set up. So we're going to say finish and commit. And that writes our partitions and formats. And now we're taking those pieces of software and we're extracting them into the system to be installed. So this loads them all up for us. <clears throat> and then from there, we'll go ahead and, you know, extract them onto the partitions we made and, and formatted. And this will vary depending on how fast your system is as well. We're verifying to make sure they haven't been corrupted or anything there. And now, this takes all of those pieces of software, the archives of it, and it's going to extract them onto that file system. So this will take a little bit of time, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I will see you in a second. Alright, the software just got done extracting, and now it's asking us to set the root account's password. Now in Unix, the, the root account is the administrator, basically. It's the user that can control all aspects of the system. So we're going to choose a good password for the user. Type the same one twice. And now this sets up our network connectivity. So we're going to go ahead and choose the default. 
we want to configure IPv4. And DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, will automatically get us our IP address, our subnet mask, and our default gateway, and all of our network information we need to be able to get on the internet. So we'll get our lease. And once that is done, take a little bit depending on the speed of the system. Okay, and IPv6 here, we're going to say no for the moment. We'll accept the default configuration from the DHCP server. Just hit tab there and hit enter. We'll select our time zone. Mine is America, United States, and Eastern's fine for my time zone. And right for the time, for the date and time, we'll skip both of these. Normally, we'd set them up with network time protocol afterward. These are the services we want to start on boot. We're going to go down to SSHD here, and we'll hit the space bar and deselect it. Now, the reasoning behind this is SSHD is secure shell. Essentially, it provides a very secure means to control the system over a network. So, you know, it could be the internet, you could be on the same LAN as this system. The reason I disabled it is because I'm assuming we're at a level, we're just getting started with FreeBSD. And if you keep this enabled and you don't know exactly how to protect it, or the ramif ramifications of enabling it, you can open yourself up to attacks, because it's a big target for attackers and bots. So that's why we want to disable it. And we'll keep the rest of these how they are, and we'll hit OK. On system hardening, we're going to go down to the last two and check the two boxes here. Again, for security. <clears throat> we want to add a user, so we'll say yes. And we're going to use T-Man. Leave full name blank. The user ID is fine to leave empty for the default. Uh, the login group's fine. We'll invite ourselves to the wheel group. This is important because when we want to become root, it's we need this to become root. And we'll login class is fine. The shell's fine. Home directory, all these are fine with the default. We'll enter our password here. Make sure it's separate from the root account because if, team, if the T-Man account is compromised, they still have one more layer to get through before getting root. And lockout account after creation, no. And this does all look okay, so we'll say yes. We don't want to add another user, so say no to that. And this is our final chance to do any other, you know, um, installation configurations and things like that. We'll say exit. <coughs> And at this point, if you want to go into the shell and edit any configuration files manually, you can make those modifications. Our case, we don't need to, so we'll just say no. And that is a full FreeBSD basic install. So at this point, I do highly recommend that um, you guys go to freebsd.org and in their documentation tab, click on the handbook link. And that has tons and tons of great documentation about every single thing you'd ever want to do with FreeBSD. And there, there's huge, there's, there's a lot of information. But um, with all of that, I'm Tyler with T-Tech. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and have a nice day.